Hey guys, my name is Jonathan, and I wanted to welcome you to the premiere episode of Demon Days, an actual play podcast with a focus on fiends and the friends who play them. I'm really excited to share this new project with you guys, and I wanted to get a few special thanks mentioned up top before we join everyone at the table. First, I want to give a big shout out to After the Hype and Brian Dressel for hosting us and helping us get off the ground. It takes a lot of work to produce podcasts, and he the OG. I also want to give a hearty thanks to Gordon McAlpin for creating the art for our show. It's a wonder to behold, and I recommend you look him up for all your artistic needs. Seriously, do it now. I also want to give a shout out to our campaign sponsor, Arknight. That's A-R-C-K-N-I-G-H-T, Arknight. They produce tabletop role-playing accessories such as maps, miniatures, and overlays for popular RPG titles. And we'll be using their products for combat encounters throughout the campaign. Thank you guys for believing in us. And I want to thank you, the listener, for joining us. D&D is a wonderful hobby and it's made even better by the people we share it with. You guys rock. Now... Let's go to the table and introduce our players and the rules for our game. For now, let's start with introducing <laughs> you all, and we'll start to my left. Hi guys, I'm Tony, and I've been playing D&D or iterations of it for years. I grew up with a uh, second edition, memorized 3.0, so yeah, I've been playing a long time. My name is uh, Drew, or Andrew if you don't know me. I started playing my, my senior year in high school. I started with second edition and then three and then three, five. And I've been playing Pathfinder for the last decade and I've dabbled a little bit in fifth and this is my first real delve into fifth edition. So I'm excited about it because I've heard really good things. And, Besides uh, that one, <laughs> uh, like two hour one shot where we played Where you it. killed me, yeah. I didn't kill you. Yeah, you did, yeah. You played a warlock and hit me in the back of the head with an Eldritch Blast. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah. Shit happens. Yeah, <laughs> shit happens. I mean, crit happens, right? Right, right. How about you, Johnny? Uh, Johnny Recker. I am a little bit of a victim of growing up in the 80s under the satanic panic. And D&D was kind of the last uh, unknown vestige of nerdum until about 10 years ago. Uh, when a very good friend of mine invited me to join his campaign. So yeah, I've kind of fallen in love with the game in the last 10 years. Cool, cool. What about you? I'm Samantha, and this is only my second campaign. Woo. I'm very new at D&D, but I fell hard and fast for it, and I was really excited to have the opportunity to play with people who are so experienced. And I'll go last. Uh, I'm Jonathan, and I'm one of the co-hosts on After the Hype, the OG podcast. Jonathan and I were roommates for... Oh, yes, yes. Almost two years? Two year years. and a half? I don't understand why we never played when we were roommates. I, I don't either. It's terrible. Yeah. yeah, so it is surprising that we haven't played. And now we can rectify that. We can. Love it. Cool, so I want to give the house rules to kind of set up this campaign, what the audience and what we can all expect. So, uh, some basic stuff, so like when we are, you know, rolling the dice, provide the total of your roll, not the number on each dice, so if you roll a 5d6, just let me know the total. Feats are allowed if you want to pick those over skill points. Drinking potions is considered a bonus action. Short rest is 30 minutes, long rest is 6 to 8 hours. This is some basic stuff, and this is more to help to people who are a little bit new to this. Um, going without sleep for more than 24 hours will incur constitution rolls for exhaustion, and this will get exponential. So, as someone who is a parent and gets very tired very often, I'm going to start enacting like, you, there's no way, unless you know you get to your, like, your level 20s and things like that when you're almost superhuman, that you can go multiple days without sleep or the basic necessities. Multiclassing is allowed, whereas in games you just kind of get the level and then you multiclass. Uh, I want you to uh, find a place in the actual game world to level up. So you're going to find a person to train you. I don't necessarily like that you do, you just have the multi-class. You're suddenly a paladin and a bard. You're now like, you have to find a, a bard, someone who is more experienced in the world. And then for the audience specifically, this is a game run and played by humans where fallible creatures and rules are gonna be misinterpreted. Mistakes will be made, especially by me, but the focus is us all having fun at the table and you as an audience having fun listening. Don't DM us with like the things we should have done. That's not a good um, etiquette for that. Just enjoy the game and we're still playing and we're not perfect. The themes and stories within this campaign will vary wildly. The whole kind of point of demon days is to deal with inner demons. So as such, you know, we'll try to give advance warning if anything kind of veers into um, territory that might need a, a trigger warning. Uh, I do appreciate those in podcasts when those come up for stories. And so we'll try to do our best to like locate those as we edit. I'll try to warn at the top of the episode very early. And uh, for the last thing, um, just as kind of a assurance, the no rape stories. That's not what we want to do here. That's mm. not the type of story that we want to do or have that kind of element play into it. I hate that it's realistic in the Game of Thrones argument that happens all the time and mm. there's discussions to be had about it, but I just want to kind of draw the line there. And um, that's it for the rules. There's some basic stuff to kind of get everyone on the same page. 
And with that, we're gonna start uh, our very first game of Demon Days. Friends, fiends, gather round and hear a tale of four devils, wakened from a slumber not their own, with no memory of how they got there. Doom. Doom. It calls to all of them as it calls to all of us. Will they be able to fight it, or do they even want to? What does the future hold for these princes and princesses of darkness? So pull up a chair, buy me an ale, but keep your wits about you, for you never know what's going to happen in these demon days. Welcome to the land of Valderian, a realm of promise, a realm of beauty, and a realm that's engulfed in war. To the northern reaches of the continent stands Tesstraghur, or the Storm Court, a domain of frost and storm ruled by the Storm Empress Mikala Drinmer. Her claim to the, to the land is ancestral, citing the promise of the Storm Lord himself and to go to her people, the Asimar. Directly opposed to her is the Rascalian Dominion, located in the heart of the continent. King Broder Lugarius Rascalian IV leads with a cruel iron fist from his throne atop the vast metropolis of Sky Point. His reach is long and his mercy short. A multitude of campaigns has allowed his grip on the continent to tighten, and yet he cannot push back against the Storm Empress and her kin. Sandwiched between the two powers are the Illiscar Elves of the Triskelane Range. Theirs is an old magic that blankets the land, keeping either side at bay for the time being. Not much is known about the elves or the domain they rule, and no one from any side who enters ever returns. To the far south stands realms unbound by rule. These lawless territories have formed their own powers, which in turn have created their own conflicts. Together, they might have enough power to push back against the Dominion's southern expansion, but that would require a measure of diplomacy and organization that simply does not exist. Further still to the south lies the Angra Expanse, a dead land broken and shattered by warfare. Some might call it a promise of what's to come under the rule of the Dominion. Our story, though, doesn't begin there. Rather, it begins up north, back in the Storm Court, as a mighty quake assaults the mighty mountain range of Gris Norvald. A burst of green light from the mountain's tallest peak pierces the sky for one breathless and seemingly eternal moment before dissipating. The weather surrounding the mountain becomes angry in response and assaults the land with an immense and terrible blizzard. Within the mountain itself, in a deep and ravaged chamber of ill purpose, our story begins. The large central chamber is dome-shaped, with faded and cracked art on the ceiling, depicting unknown deities and open combat against devils and demons. At the apex of the dome, and where all the art converges, is a strange reflective circular plate. In the center of the chamber is an elaborate obsidian altar, on which is placed a long iron spike. Draped around this spike are the bones of some demonic creature, and at the very top of the spike rests a horned skull that is a different mass and color from the bones below. At each corner of this chamber stands a tall pillar with devilish faces carved into them around the entire circumference, looking up at a much larger and more detailed face at the top. At two ends of this chamber are two stone doorways with ornate frames. Both are shut. Sconces at regular intervals around the wall have torches that are lit, but dimming. Bodies are strewn about the room as if some kind of battle took place and blood is splattered all around. Arrows stick out from a few bodies and broken weapons litter the ground. Near the very front of the altar is a large corpse of some own unknown ape-like creature. Slashes and arrows pepper its body as do scarring from magical blasts. A few mutated and gnarled creatures lie dead around it as well. Upon the altar near four unconscious tiefling, one in each corner of the altar. Their bloodied arms outstretched and locked into wrist shackles, which seem to be for drawing blood. The first tiefling wakes, and I need you all to roll your very first d20 for the campaign. And this is where we'll see if I'm gonna die. <laughs> 12, what do you got? Seven. 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 13. Okay, you've got the highest number. No oh, hell. Yusuf, you awake to find your wrist shackles broken, and the corpse of what appears to be another paladin lying next to you. Enough arrows stick out of the back of its head to indicate to you that that fellow's probably dead. 
but he must have gotten you out of your shackles. You look around you and you see the scene before you, and three other unconscious people. How wide is the chamber again? Do a, a quick perception check, not a very difficult one. Uh, five. About 50, 60 feet, okay. or something. Kind of more of a rounded dome. Does anything in here look familiar? You said your perception check was five, right? Yeah. Okay. The ape-like creature on the ground seems a little familiar. Um, you see a few other people who, who seem to be like they were uh, an adventuring party of some kind, but you notice that the wrist shackles on the other tiefling are actually pretty weak. So you can get through those without much effort. Okay. But um, there's not, they're like you don't recognize anyone around the ground. You just see various assortments of people who look more geared for adventuring, a few more roped fellows and like more demon type, type thing. So it looks like it just something happened here. Do I know how I got here? Uh, do a, I would say a history check. 15. You, you sense that- This is after I left, I'm assuming. And right, you, you kind of sense that there is a, a time of just no memory between when you were last in the city you came from okay. and here. So <clears throat> something must have drawn you to here. And you do remember some feelings of the very end being drawn towards a northerly direction. So you kind of get the sense that whatever happened to you that led you here. And now at about this time, kind of as you're kind of looking around, um, who got the second highest one? Taslin. You suddenly wake up. You find yourself strapped in to these metal shackles at this altar in this very unfamiliar place in this deep cavern. And you take in all the sights as we see, but you also notice this other tiefling wandering around. Do I have all my stuff? I'm assuming no. Or do I yeah, see no, you still have all your stuff. Really? It seemed, it seemed like no one was interested in your stuff, yeah. Okay. Um, do I see her stirring? Uh, do you want people to notice you stirring? Um, I'm actually gonna start pulling in my shackles, kind of. Okay, so then, yeah, you notice, you notice she's pulling her shackles, trying to pull out it. Um, I'll go over. Okay. I'm assuming we were set up directly across from each other. Yeah, kind of. So if you imagine like a kind of a squirrel that four points kind of looking at each other splayed out. Um, I'll go to whoever's closest. Are the shackles for me budging at all? Or? A little bit. If you want to do a quick strength check. Yeah. Can... 16. 16? Yeah. They start to shift a little bit. Like pull okay. again. Like they start to loosen from mm -hmm. the base. I'm going to try and wiggle my arm actually out. Nat 20, so 22! Where's the bonsai, right? I know, right? <laughs> um, yeah, you, you break through those pretty quickly. They don't, they, that that particular area of the base of the altar is kind of weak. Like, it's like nailing into sheetrock and just kind of pops yeah. out. Okay. Um, at this time, who, between you guys again, who had the higher number? It was two, two, seven. two sevens. You both wake up at, the, at this point, and at the sound of that ripping from the base, it kind of shifts a little bit, and you both kind of startle awake from that. And you see the scene in front of you. Well, I'm gonna try to look without, like, revealing that I'm awake. Okay, uh, just do a quick um, stealth check, just a basic, st st basic stealth check, and if anyone wants to compete against that with um, a perception. Uh, 13. Was okay. I going over to him or her? I would imagine, based off of how we're sitting now, um, it's kind of how you're sitting, so it would be kind of yeah. for each of you, yeah. Um, it'd be a perception of a 17. 17? Okay. You do notice that he's stirred a little bit, and then- yeah, I'm you also all... trying not to be noticed. You're trying not to be noticed too? Yeah. So then roll that, roll that stealth. Five. Three. Five? <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you get a little bit of dust. Uh, in your nose and you sneeze. Bless you. Who was that? I'll look back, look over. That was way too feminine to be you, dude. <clears throat> it wasn't me. Well, then I guess it would have to be me. Can someone help me? Are you all right? Well, that depends. What am I looking at? What, what are these for? Oh, these four. Uh, yeah, that would be a good time for everyone to... Yeah. Um, Describe themselves. So um, let's start with uh, the one who's walking around, uh, Yusuf. Let's describe yourself to. Uh... So Yusuf is, he's fairly big. Um, he's wearing a breastplate. He's got a pair of hand axes back here on, on the back of his hips. And then uh, he's got a great sword side saddle. And then it looks like some type of hammer on, on his back. His horns kind of stay low and across the brow. He looks a little bit more like a satyr than a. Uh, the tiefling, his coloring is, um, it looks like he's been out in nature 
quite a bit. His skin is less of a red than like a brown. When he shifts though, you can see uh, tan lines where it is red underneath and he has uh, purple hair and um, I can't remember what the color of his eyes are. They're beautiful. Yeah. Oh, Glorious. <laughs> He's, uh, he, he, is, he is pretty comely, walks with a confident step, and um, uh, he has uh, hooves instead of feet. Uh, Taslin, her skin is kind of like ashen gray, uh, but depending on how the light hits it, and especially like around her cheekbones and stuff like that, it tends to be on the more blue side. Um, her horns are very much like a ram, so she's got it back behind her hairline, curves down and around, um, and she pretty much has, a, like, her hair is kind of braided around her horns. She's got holes drilled into her horns that, um, has, like, silver rings and studs through her horns and stuff like that, and her hair is actually a dark auburn kind of color. So it's rusted in a sense. And then uh, her eyes, um, very kind of similar in the sense that they're a dark golden color, um, almost kind of like auburn firelight in a sense. And then she's, her clothes are pretty much classic traveling gypsy kind of thing. She's got um, a loose shirt with a vest kind of over it and um, belts with, pouches and potion bottles and um, like even a little book holder for some of her cards that she carries around with her. Um, her boots are lined with fur. She's got like miscolored socks that you see poking over her boots. So very kind of like her clothes are very pulled together and she's got patches and stuff that are um, sewn into it. Um, and then she's got her tail with a little tuft of fur and some rings around her tail as well. So Lisa is so pale, she's kind of white like snow. It's almost opalescent. And she has rust colored hair as well. She is wearing a black sort of gi robe, like a martial artist. Her feet are bare. Um, and she's really, really slight. Uh, she's kind of built for Clearly hand-to-hand -hand combat kind of thing, um, almost like a dancer. Uh, she's Her eyes are black, and she's got horns that, um, she's got gazelle horns, so they go straight up and her hair just kind of is swiped back over them like they might as well not be there. Yeah, and her tail, it ends in a black-tipped arrowhead spike. So it's a white tail, but it ends in a little black tip. So she's very... Very black and white with a little little pop of color in that, <laughs> <laughs> that rust colored hair. All right, and then what does uh, everyone see when they look at uh, you better? You'd have to look very close to notice that I was tiefling at all. Very human, light brown, very tanned complexion, big mane of kind of dark brunette hair, and just at the very edge, you can see little tips of his horns kind of coming out over it. He's wearing, for all intents and purposes, what's like a chocolate brown three-piece suit, one kind of shoulder pauldron. Tie a little loosened, probably from the circumstance. And, uh... <laughs> Let me just loosen my tie and, here. Uh, a bit disconcerted as to what's going on. And you too, you notice too that as you're kind of working at the chains a little bit, that they're not very strong. So like one hit could cleave them through, or just a good powerful yank would uh, also probably tear them from the base of this altar. Is it just the chains that look weaker? Can I? It's kind of like they're kind of manacles. So like they're like <clears throat> a, a, a slat plate with manacles that have your hand, like your hands kind of your wrists out on the platform. So like you, you sense that your 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 um, your wrists are pierced. As you're sitting on there, uh, as you were sitting on there, so like all you have to do is just kind of pull out of it because uh, they're weak enough that you could do it, but it'll be a little, little painful, but nothing too much. So you're saying it's like it's a flat plate and then clamps come down over. Yeah, it. clamps come down over. Yeah. Okay, so since I'm there, I'm like, uh, do you want help? Uh, sure. Um, put a foot on the middle and just try and strength check. Yeah, just do a strength check. The DC is really low on that. Roll the one. <laughs> um, apparently, when, yours is really tough. And when stuck he in does it. it, I'll try to slide of hand my hands out of the shackles. Thanks, mate. <clears throat> now, can I? Is he? Does he have any on his? Is there livery on his breastplate? 
it has um it's got like a forest motif um right there's no uh um there's no holy symbol that you yeah, see colors, heraldry, holy symbol, like that. heraldry, no. anything like that. Um, In fact, it, I mean, even glancing at it, you almost kind of sense that it's doing its best to not, almost to the point of where it's not even patterned, just kind of discordant forest imagery on there. Yeah. Thanks, friend. No problem. And I pull my hands in after like slamming my knuckles into the metal <laughs> as he slipped out. <laughs> Glad I could help. <laughs> Smarts a little bit. I'm gonna like kind of talk to my hand. Look for a second to okay. call out my sentinel raven. I'm just kind of like, hey, you can. I think it's okay. <laughs> Come on out. About a second passes, and at first you don't, you're not sure that anything heard you, but then you see a little bit of smoke start to gather around the symbol in your ring, and <clears throat> out pops the raven. Pet it a little bit. Hey, bud. That's a neat kind of kind of. Need a hand there? I slip out of the, I'm gonna try to slip out of the monocles because like, I saw how. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, you can roll like a, a dex with advantage or something with that since you you watched him do it. Okay. Nine. Nine? Close. You, you kind of start to do some stances and try to get your arms curl around, but you just kind of get stuck on halfway through. You're, you're kind of having some trouble there, and it kind of is visible that you're. Getting some trouble, like you're like, I think I got it. But... I suppose I do. What do you think, big man? Wanna... <laughs> we'll work my way over and knock one out. Hopefully, I just lose other... my footing this time. <laughs> Maybe you can help. <laughs> What'd you get? Uh, eleven. Eleven? Yeah, that's good. You oh. pop it out. Phew. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you did it this time. Good job. You didn't see that, did you? How did you see that from way over there? Hey, we heard it. Hey, I... I slipped, I'm sorry. I pulled my hands out right as he did it. I appreciate it. I, uh, looked down at my hands, I guess. Oh, kind of where the, where the marks were, where you were pierced. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, you do see uh, individual points, uh, probably like four on each arm, just kind of deep points. You must be a little on, on the low side for blood at the yeah. moment. Well, I usually ask for dinner first, but uh, they get all you two. And you all notice the same marks from this, and you can kind of see the the, the, the spikes. They're not very deep. They don't go very deep in there. Just enough to just to start it flowing. Just to start it flowing. Yeah. I'm gonna um, start <laughs> since I he called that attention. Um, I'm gonna look around, kind of see if there's like a flow line from those. If there's any arcade marks. Okay. Yeah. Do a, an investigation check. 18. 18? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, so you kind of walk your walk a circle around the altar itself looking for something that might be emanating out, but then you realize at a certain point that nothing's kind of coming out of the altar. You, so you, you kind of see, you can kind of trace from where the, each manacle is a little, uh, just, it's almost faint. It's almost enough to miss, but like little dents in the, in, uh, in the stone itself. And you can kind of see that it leads to the spike on the altar itself. So directly to that altar spike. Okay. Hmm. So it looked like whatever you guys were doing was kind of leading to that particular thing that's still kind of facing up. I'm going to reach into my vest, pull out my pocket watch, look at it. How much time's passed since the last thing I remember? The last thing you remember? Yeah. So you take a glance at your watch and you kind of look at it and then look at it again because it doesn't seem that right. It's like a, about a month has passed. We're all like three ten day. Oh, yeah, so you, you've been without memory for a large stretch of time. And it is a bit jarring at first when you look at it because it's like, mm, maybe the watch is broken. But your experience in the past, you know that that's, it would no, take a lot to break that thing. Yeah. Can I go, the monkey man's on the altar, right? The, the ape man? Uh, and, and just past it, so like. Okay. I'm gonna go investigate him for Mark. Like after I notice my marks, <laughs> I want to see if any of these other dead people have anything similar, just to try and piece together what we might have just been used for. I would say, for the ape creature, uh, do an Arcana check okay. on that, and then for everything else, it would be a straight investigation. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Oh, good, good, good. You remember, as you kind of look it over, you kind of lift the arm up. It's heavy, and it drops with a thud, and you kind of navigate around all the arrows sticking out of it. And you take its really ugly snout, and you look in there. You're, you're spending a little bit of time in this. Everyone 
and everyone else, you just kind of, she's just really getting to town and inspect, inspecting this body. Um, you recall some texts from your personal libraries at the, at the monastery, and you notice, or and you, you kind of recall, this, this is a, a, a demon creature from the abyss known as the uh, Barogurva. It takes you a while to kind of like, as you're inspecting it, like, okay, the orange fur, the way the tusks are shaped and kind of curve a little bit, but it's just like, it is pretty beat up too. So it, it does take you about a good 10, is, 15 minutes to kind of look it over. Is there a lot of decay on these bodies? <clears throat> no. Are they freshly dead? Freshly dead. Okay. Um, I would say like in certain parts, the, the, there seems to be dry blood and other parts seem a little bit more, a little bit like that kind of that in between between dry and wet where it's like you could still slip on it a little bit. And it, Starting to curl. It's starting to curl on the top sticky. layer. Yes, it's it's in the sticky phase, the icky sticky phase. While she's um at that, I'm gonna start to idea ID kind of the rest of the bodies around. Okay. Yeah, if you want to do an investigation. I'm gonna do the same thing on the paladin since everybody's up. Natural one. <laughs> Natural one. Oh, very exciting. <laughs> uh, eighteen. Eighteen. And so you're, you're sorry. Uh, just remind me again what you were you he's, were looking he's, the, at the the paladin that the oh, yeah. paladin next to you. Yeah. yeah. You notice he is a, a human male, uh, more of a, a like Nordic features, a little bit huskier um, than a few of the like. There's you can see other some other humans spread about, but he is um, wearing a um, a symbol of actually you don't really see anything on him like that's that the iconography seems to be removed from it. But uh, on his armor itself, there you see a lot of um, reference to storms, and so you get a sense that it's he's from the area. Okay. And that um, he follows in, in the the realm of the Star Lord. But yeah, you notice that a few like some of the some of that iconography is like scratched off. Like recently, or like he he took it off himself. Uh, maybe as part of like the battle or time. It does seem like wear and tear. But he did sustain a lot of, of gashes. So like you, you kind of turn him over too. You can see like his front is just jacked up really bad, and there's enough arrows on his back to kind of make it harder to move him around. Oh right, he had arrows in his head. That's right. With the storm motif that he's got going, am I getting the sense of a paladin or like yeah city guard or something or yeah the, the armor is a bit more ornate than any just random city guard. And you can even see as you kind of look out, there are other people with different types of armors that kind of seem to you more adventurer-like, and they don't seem quite nearly as a presence. What kind of weapon did he use, or...? Uh, just a, an axe. This Baragura. Mm-hmm. Is he wearing anything? Are there any marks or symbols on him? Nope, or completely. Just... It's not wearing anything. It's just all fur and... And his wounds are mostly arrow wounds. Are there any other types of wounds on his body that I notice? From what you can do, because he's... I'm, heavy... like, into this. This yeah. is the first time I've seen a dead super, like, a dead demon. Okay. This is... The, I'm so... I almost look happy right <laughs> I'm, I am living for this. So, yeah, you're kind of hopping, hopping around it. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, it, it's... It's impossible for just you alone to move him around, but at any part that you can kind of lift up, you do see lots of gashes. And um, if you want to do a quick medicine check, just based off of just some of the basic stuff you know from your, your time in the monastery, you can kind of gauge that. So six. Six? You know, some, some sword wounds, some axe wounds. So it looks like it was a it was a concerted effort to take this thing down. I'm still inspecting the uh, the pillar that all the trails lead to. Okay, yeah, the, cent- the yeah. center of the altar? Uh, yeah, the center altar. Yeah, you can, you can kind of see that directly, um, kind of in the way we have our microphone set up, the pole kind of sticks out up, and then everything kind of points and leads you your eyes to that metal plate. So it looks like whatever was used, this was used for, what you guys were, whatever this thing you were a part of, all ties into that. I'm gonna actually um, shoot my raven up there. Okay. And tell it just to like take a look so I can kind of inspect it and see too. Yeah, do another, just mm-hmm. another inspection. <laughs> inspection check. <laughs> Eight. Eight. <laughs> Hopefully that's enough, dear God. It's the lowest. It's like a reflective surface. Now that I'm satisfied with my demon inspection, I kind of liked him and I see he's inspecting a dead body. So okay. I'm like, <laughs> What do you think happened? Do you think they fought each other? What are you seeing? Can I look at your dead guy? Yes. Cool. <laughs> cool, you can start inspecting this, <laughs> this passage uh, investigation. A natural one. <laughs> Asher looks um, normal. 
Not too interesting. <laughs> but with none of the iconography, you're like, just like, it's like, oh! Uh, like, you start to piece him over, it's like, he just was not as interesting as that Baller Girl or Bar. Bar Girl! Oh, human man. Ball girl. I'm bored. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was a laugh. Um, catch you guys at the five year. Uh, I've got places to. Oi. And I'll just start it, to constant. To, to just head towards whatever door I see. Yeah, there, there are two doors on opposite sides, and you notice that they're both shut. Like, they're stone. Okay, so it's like it's fallen. It looks like a stone door. You can't, like, you feel around it, you can't tell if it's hinged or if it's a sliding thing. It's clean stone, so it's not like jagged. So it's like, you know, it's, it's, it is a door, a functioning door. It doesn't seem as clumsily put there, so it doesn't seem like a cave in or anything like that. Fun. Fun, fun, fun. Uh, hey, can I... hey, yeah. you, over there. Yeah. You want to come help me with this? I need a second eye on it. Sure. If we can't why get out, not? we might as well work together, well, I right? I was kind of... Yeah, why not? Um, I'll go up and take a look at the altar, and yeah. anything I would happen to recognize of note. Do a um, history check. A nine. A nine? Yes. It is kind of hard to place. This does look familiar, though. Like, in, in your travels between the planes, you, you you feel like you have seen at least some basic machination of this uh, design. <laughs> if you're cat. here, yeah. <laughs> the, cat, the, the cat is drinking water. There's a cat behind me. <laughs> Fetter is just actively licking the altar. <laughs> <laughs> just bent down and just... just... I'm like, oh, well, okay. I mean, if that's one way to inspect it, sure, <laughs> go ahead. You know, taste so is one of the more valuable senses. To mm. each their own, right? It does bother you, though. Like, it's like you should know what this, like, you've seen something like this before. That's kind of what you like. It, it's, yeah, it's, it's not uh, quite there. It's on the back of your mind, not quite right. coming to you. I don't know. Altar, blood, bulgura from the abyss seems kind of standard issue, trans dimensional bullshit. I see them gathered at the altar, so I kind of walk over. Okay. Do I notice anything? Do you, um, are you looking at kind of around the whole room or do you know, at the altar I'm itself? I'm looking at the altar. Okay, yeah, go ahead, give it a try. Because I'm, I'm still excited about my demon. I want to know what he was up to. <laughs> Every other, like, body that's around here, there are humans, right? Yeah, do just do a quick, another okay. uh, quick perception. I think only you did a perception. I got a 13 for the 13? altar. Similar results. He's like, he's like, this kind of does seem familiar, but just it's like an altar to something. And heck, if you know, twelve, twelve. <clears throat> yeah, you, you notice um, a few like there's a few that have that kind of adventuring get up, leather armors, and like more like what you might consider a lame adventuring party that might go out. But there are some that also have like robes. There are some robe figures, and you kind of notice them and. and as you're kind of walking around, and you can kind of see that they have some symbols on them. So you, you check a little deeper, and uh, on them you can kind of see a prominent icon etched in a pattern. Uh, three kind of obtuse triangles organized to look like an arrowhead face down. Mm -hmm. And uh, the top triangle's widest angle faces downward with the center hollowed out, kind of like mm -hmm. a little ring, and then the bottom two triangles just extend down each side. But it's uh, etched, it's like a red etching on black robes. So that's kind of, the, that's kind of what's mixed in between the bodies. You also just notice off to the side, leaning against one of the um, stat, like those pillars with all the faces on them, you notice that there is a kind of cloaked, kind of leather bound, like rogue type figure holding onto it as if he was trying to grab at something. Okay. You're a tiefling. You're a tiefling. You're a tiefling. We're all tieflings. We didn't do this, right? I mean, I don't remember doing this. Do you have any memory before this, because I do not. I would think we didn't, considering we were shackled and had our wrists poked. Yeah, drawn blanks. Um, I want an insight check. All these. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> these <laughs> all these peoples. <laughs> insight versus the, the competing. You guys don't have to roll two. I got a one. <laughs> got a one? Well, I mean, you always tell the truth, right? <laughs> Fetter, you realize that um, for Lisa, you can like read her just completely. She's right. not. She's there's not like a dishonest bone in her body. Right. Oh. I'm saying a twenty-four. Just. Yeah, what, 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 what do you guys? What do you guys say? Are you telling the truth? Or? What would that be? Persuasion. In insight. So if I were trying, it would have been a twenty-two. But no, like, I have. The last thing I remember is starting off 
to head north to find whatever was felt pulled from my home. I had a, I had a headache. It ran through my head, up my horns, and it was the only way to make it sate was to head in a certain direction. That's the last thing I remember. I don't remember coming here, being here, or any of this. I got a 16 for deception, so. You got a 24. I know. <laughs> yeah, I like, know. Are you telling the truth or? <clears throat> I wasn't not. necessarily not telling the truth, but okay, at the you, same you time. Can, you like, can definitely remember the truth. She's trying to, she's trying to feel you out. Here. There's a little oh, bit of like resistance there. <laughs> yeah, she's trying to feel you out a little bit before she explicitly says anything truthful. So you sense that there's some guardedness there, but okay. the, the, it checks out. I got hmm. transported here, I think. Yeah. Mm, did a... Does anyone else have a splitting headache? Do I? You had before, but it's subsided by now. <sighs> I mean, like when, when I do I don't? Before. No, you didn't, when, you didn't when you woke up. You did before, but I'm fine, actually. I mean, generally I've noticed some sinus issues that happen, but no. Any other bruising besides these? Seems good. <clears throat> I'm kind of slowly, as they're talking, just like side strafing over to the body that's like hanging okay. and grabbing and just kind of gonna... Yeah, well, like... the funny thing is we're both, <laughs> we're both inching that way and like still looking oh, at each other. Oh, just looking into the... Oh, got <laughs> like, my eye on you. I'm gonna this trust is palpable. Yeah. It's like... Uh, Perception 15. I'm like, yeah. why am I standing between you two now? Because... <laughs> You notice that they are there. Slowly they're, just making their way. Oh, what's he um, doing? I just kind of like. You all kind of at the same friends, time. Aren't we? Yeah. yeah, you all at the same time. Right? He seems like he was trying to get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Are you nuts? Are you nuts? Yeah. 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 No, you, yeah. You, you guys all kind of noticed that, that, that. That guy. Yeah. Figure that, guy. that dead yeah. body yeah. kind of holding on to the that hold the column. And as you get closer, you notice that there's like a, a bar, like a handlebar on it that kind of curves around it, like a like a railing of some kind. Like he's holding on to that. As he's just kind of, <clears throat> sp- like, kind of splayed there, like he kind of <clears throat> bent back a little bit. As he was like, he, like he might have leapt for it, and then the arrows kind of pummeled him. So he's kind of caved. But like he's forward. still hanging on. He's still hanging on to like he got it. To, I'm but gonna, is he? I'm gonna check and see if he's stapled to the actual like if arrows pierced him to hold. <laughs> I, I don't understand how he would still be holding on. So if he's dead, he's Rick going. Is. is he stuck? And I'm going. Let's just pull him off. And I'm like, hold on, oh, <laughs> everybody. Wild, everybody, let's sure, take a big right. deep breath. You die oh, shocked. <laughs> I don't want to check the contraption, considering there's a bunch of arrows in his back. I'm going to check it for traps. Check it for traps. The the column itself. The the, the handle. Whatever yeah, he's holding on to. Um, I would do um, yeah, ch- just a check for traps or like a perception, I guess. Yeah. Okay. There's no disarm trap. <laughs> disarm me. trap check. Wait a minute. Ha ha. 16. 16? What do you roll for that? Is it sleight of hand in fifth? So uh, yeah, disarm. I guess so. Yeah, so mm-hmm. uh, we can just do the side hand one. That's fine. Okay, that makes it a 14. 14? Yeah. No, it's not trapped. All right, okay. But it, but it does look like a contraption of some kind. You are you're kind of right in thinking that it is. Right. Can I check out what his fingers might have been doing? Like I feel pretty confident in my skills around dead bodies, right? Okay. I just want to and I just want to poke him. <laughs> can I? <laughs> yeah. No. You, you, Here's you, a stick. Yeah. Can you, I try to maybe like pull his hands off of the? Yeah. Do, the a, do a strength check because you're trying okay. to. Nat you 20. Nat 20? podcaster right now. Chomp, 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 chomp. At least I'm not talking about it. So 21. 21? But well, you rolled a 20 though, right? Yes. Yeah, so like, you go to try to pull the body up and, yeah, you were right, it was like a, a, a rigor more thing, so it t- you tug a little bit at it, but as you kind of, you try to kind of just heave to the left a little bit, and as you do, the, the column <laughs> shifts a little bit, and all the faces kind of turn, especially the one at the top kind of turns a little bit. Well, that was something. Do it again. <clears throat> I do it again. Yeah. You turn around and like by now you've been able to rip the body, like the hands break and just kind of break off the thing. You're like, oh, gross. cool. And then you know, it flops over and, and you pull it again. The, the thing just turns and it turns pretty freely and the face keeps turning around. And um, if you do, do a quick um, perception check. 17. 17. 14. 14. 19. I okay, yeah, I mean, for the most part, y'all you, you notice that a few of them, well, most of them, except for that particular one, 
they're all facing the altar, like four in total, four big columns. But as soon as like you get the face turned around and it seems to be pointing to one side, you hear like a <laughs> like a click sound. Is it kind of like you like when you when you move like a little safe around, like you turn the dial, and you hear like a click click, and you get the, that mm -hmm. one click you need. Mm -hmm. You kind of hear that with that once it reaches one side. Are there handles like this on the other posts around the altar? Yes. I think it's a safe or a combination. Okay. Or a puzzle? Yes. <laughs> or it'll summon another one of those. Or it'll open the doors. There's a lot of things you could do. And where's your sense of adventure? We might as well do it. I left it in the basin with my blood, apparently. I'm just trying to be a little cautious right now. It wasn't that much blood. How much sense of adventure do you have? <clears throat> Not a lot, apparently. Oh, right? So very... <laughs> Let's do it. So my raven's gonna come down and just like, boop, on my shoulder. Yeah, it lands on your shoulder, kind of the nestles, let's, yeah. like tilts his head a little bit against your, your ear. And then just kind of <laughs> ruffles the feathers a little bit. <laughs> I'm gonna look at But like it. in a way that almost feels like ethereal, like it almost kind of like mm -hmm. those weird 3D pictures that kind of like do, like, or, or a misprinted newspaper where it feels a little off for a second. Mm -hmm. It's like, doop, doop. Nice. It's a little weird. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna look at one of my new best friends here. Just be like, ready? Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> which, for re just for reference, which ones are you at and, and doing? Well, that. which one was the first one that we did? You guys were looking at... Would be the Southwest one. That we were just at? Uh, yes. So it was and the. Better, which one were you turning? I was gonna go if you were. So you were done west. <clears throat> I went to, um, just the. I just while you guys were talking, I just went to the north side of the room. So I did yeah. the northwest. Yeah. So. So then we go to the <clears throat> last two. Yeah. Okay. Northeast. And then and where are you all turning those things? Because right now, uh, three of them, minus the one that you had already, that she had already turned around, was. They're, They're all facing, facing the altar. altar. Yeah. Oh, we're yeah. gonna trial and error. We're just gonna turn them until they click, well, right? Well, <laughs> maybe face it towards she, that door. She turned it towards the door and clicked. Yeah, had like a click, like it was. Yeah, I'll turn it to, to the, the east face door so that they both look at the west door, so okay. that mine also looks towards the west door. Okay. I'm gonna pull my sword. <laughs> I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep. So the call thing, west down. door. <laughs> yeah. Let's get okay, out so of here. West door. All west door? Yep, right. As, as each one clicks into place, you, it, for a second, nothing happens. You, you fear that you may have got the puzzle wrong, but then you hear like a, a little bit of a shaking and the west door shifts up, leaving a path beyond. Awesome. So it looks like it is a, a mechanism to either deal with the altar or open a door. So the adventurers figured it out. So basically, you do can't we do anything see with what the else altar these do? if the doors are open. It has to be enclosed. Yeah, that's what you kind of, as you're looking over it, you realize that, yeah, for anything to happen with the altar, the door would need to be closed so that the mechanism is built to have it. Everything happening is in a closed space, a controlled space. I start heading out the door. So yeah. I will just, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm standing next to the door with just, just gesturing Gesture, like, towards after you. After. I do a little hop skip into the door. Okay. <clears throat> you guys make your, your way out. Uh, and you kind of head through. And uh, I take one last look at my dead demon friend, though. Kind of give him a wave and <laughs> so scurry out. <laughs> so, yeah, so you kind of immediately go from that doorway into this uh, smaller uh, chamber area that kind of looks like you, you see kind of a, a, a gate in front of you. As you walk into it, you almost kind of tr you almost trip over whole mess of ice, a lot more than that were in this room, uh, most of which are robed in that black robe with red symbol. A few uh, suffered from slashing jam damage, <laughs> others from magical blasts, and others from arrow wounds, and that this gate leading out itself is closed. And to the right and the left of the gate are two small hallways that kind of turn sharp, sharply like their own like small little chambers up to the, the right and left of this room. But you look like, it looks like there was more serious shit here. I mean, talk about a dead end. <laughs> <laughs> really? So, no sense of adventure and no humor either? <laughs> We're gonna get along great. Interesting. Um, <laughs> uh, real quick, Yeah. in the other room, mm -hmm. the dead people that were around, did any of them have a bow? So it was kind of an equal smattering thing, so like, so sure. people had bow. Any of the, were there any of the 
adventurer looking types they had a bow that were dead. Yeah, there were a few. Just... Okay. Like, this They've seen a... a lot of arrows. Yeah. <clears throat> like this was a, a pretty big party geared more toward like some ranged and I'm gonna Got it. hack and slash. <clears throat> Reach down and there's like just like a dagger in my hand that if you weren't looking you wouldn't really know where it came from. <clears throat> and I'm gonna cut off one of the the symbols on okay. the front of a robe. And then I'm gonna toss toss the most important looking body of this group. I just kind of see if it had anything in its pockets. Uh, these uh, bodies are, the robe figures are pretty light. Right. Um, yeah, they don't seem to have any sort of like coinage or anything like that. Yeah. So you, you get a sense that uh, looks they're uh, fanatic. Look for a meeting. Yeah, they're, I mean, uh, uh, you kind of get the sense that like, they didn't have much possessions on them, that this was going to be their final something or other. Oh, mm-hmm. great. <clears throat> How cheerful. Dressed, dressed for the spaceship. Yeah, <laughs> <Just> spaceship. <laughs> Do I like recognize these as felt like monks or religious people? Yeah, yeah, they're they're religious folks, uh, cultists. Uh, you've read up a few different cultist cultish orders over the year, but um, these ones seem to be kind of a recent thing. Like there hasn't been too many, there hasn't been too much cult activity that you know of, at least from your your perch in the, the monastery and kind of in your travels about. So this seems to be kind of fairly... And they don't connect to my knowledge of the Baragura. Uh, if you want to do, I guess, a history check. 16. Well, you don't get quite a direct connection. You, you, you do know that this is something to do with the Nine House, at least. The, the, that, that kind of, the way the symbol and iconography exists, and with the down point, the downward pointing iconography, you sense that there is some uh, mm. hell <clears throat> connection, even though you don't know maybe specifics. I can't say for sure, but I think that these guys were fighting on the side of the demon. That, uh, that makes sense. Um, I'm gonna look at one of the bodies, um, Take the robe off okay. and just examine the body. Is there any mark that's on the body that coincides with the mark on the? No, and in, in fact, as you take the robe off, you the the body is fairly light. These bodies are fairly light as you examine them. Uh, very emaciated, very pale gray skin, uh, almost skeletal. The faces are sunken in a bit, very sallow and gaunt, gaunt and and. <clears throat> Just like human? Mostly human, yeah. You, you, you would think that maybe this is how the, a human might decay. Like if you had opened up a, a couple month old coffin or something like that. So these like, have been dead longer. No, that's just how their skin, like how they look. They look emaciated oh, okay. as if they've been continually suffering. So they, 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 they fit a very stereotypical picture of what a cultist might be to your mind. Just very wasted away. Used. Yeah, very used, very husk-like. If they're still looking around, I'll guard. Somewhere, like somewhere in the middle of the room, so I can see both exits. Yeah, yeah. and you, you can kind of even see a little bit through the actual rather right. thick portcullis gate in front of you that leads kind of out from here, continuing west. And then you see the two paths off to the left and the right. Uh, I'm gonna go to the left and kind of just very slowly poke my head around the corner. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it pretty much ends immediately. Like as you look over, you see like it just ends immediately as it. Begins like in this small little room, and you can kind of see that there's this uh, on the ground a lever that's about waist high, kind of more or a mechanical nature, and it looks like you could either push it or pull it. Ooh, another puzzle. Let me see. <laughs> you walk over there, and you see the yeah, you see the same thing. Do you think there's one on the other side? Yeah, I think so. Okay, let's go. Look. Yeah. <laughs> You run across and you do see that there is the same exact setup, the two handles. And even as you look, you fully get into the room and look out, you can actually see into the next room, although the light is dimmer and it's kind of harder to make out things below. But you look, it's kind of like a little parapet that kind of looks over as if you can, you, you can from, your, from where you're standing near the handles, you can see kind of out. This is probably the way to, uh, to raise and lower this gate. Mm-hmm. Should we try it? Uh, are they... Facing like one particular way, or they, is the lever just straight up? They're both facing toward, like toward the back, toward the east. So they're, they're facing back. Okay. They're both, then they're both facing. You can you can kind of see it and confirm with each other because you can you can see each other across the across the gate. So I have a question. Mm-hmm. I noticed you talking with your bird earlier. Can he fit through these cracks in the gate to let us know what's on the other side? Is that his job? I don't want to offend. You wanna? 
Mm-hmm. Kind of tilts his head a little bit. All right, go on. He kind of hops to and kind of <clears throat> speeds through it um, and takes a look at. Now for this ability, is there any limitation on it? Um, <clears throat> I think he can go as far as 100 feet from me. And when he's flying away, I do have the ability to kind of see through his eyes. Okay. And so that would, would that, that basically kind of puts it to where you see nothing but through his eyes. Yes. Okay. So are you going to do that or are you going to wait for him to kind of communicate back? Yeah, no, I'll do that. Okay. So your eyes kind of gloss over, um, this become milky white, and you guys all notice that she kind of just kind of takes a second to adjust, but she just has stopped moving and is focusing. And um, <laughs> as it's happening, you, you can't hear anything. You just kind of are in the perception of this this bird. And yeah, so you, you kind of flies through and um, you can see that this looks like as you go through like a, a sanctuary of some kind. Can you see like the stairs from the, through the gate descend and lead into this main area, which is yet another just tableau of death. This is kind of getting excessive at this point. Uh, there's pews that are shattered and tossed on either side of the room and more robe corpses uh, splayed and gnarled across them. Uh, there's another ape-like creature actually in the middle of the room. Again, like heading toward, heading to the west, but just dead in a very similar way, mostly hacked and slashed. Um, you can see a, a tall Asimar male in animal skins grasping onto a hilt with both hands on the back of this bar, bar, <laughs> bar old girl. <laughs> and, and he, like, he is, he too is dead, but it seems like he was able to deliver some last death blow to it before okay. perishing. And, um, are you communicating this as you see it or are you just kind of keeping that to yourself? I'm keeping it to myself. So you guys just see her, she's just zonked out and like zoned out. And you can see kind of some smoke emanating off the body uh, of both the, the, the ape creature and barbarian person as if like there were magic blasts on it. And you can mm-hmm. see scores of magic blasts on them too. And then, you know, as it curves around, you can see on the walls just more iconography just of demon and devil on either side, like against like at each other, like looking at each other mm-hmm. and like snarling and gar- more gargoyle gar- gargoyally. Good God. Um, <laughs> gar- gargoyle like poses. Are hard. Yeah, especially with speech like mine. Yeah, and it does like as they get closer to the top, it looks like they they're in like two sides of a combat. Mm-hmm. And so then the bird kind of pops back through, lands on your shoulder, and for a brief second before you pop out of this, you see yourself. On the shoulder, and it is a weird adjustment before you snap back. Well, that was new. Uh, so you're gonna enjoy this because there's there's another ape guy. Oh, the bear girl! <laughs> you guys, you guys, there's two. <laughs> is he alive? No. How cool! There is so much more death. <clears throat> so much more death. Which is probably good for us. <clears throat> But could also be bad. Death is inherently neutral. Please. What'd you say? Uh, gate? Yeah? Ready? Yes! Okay. Okay, we're gonna. I don't know that I caught your name. I don't think you gave it though. Uh. Yusuf. Uh, Fedor. I'm Lisa. Lisa, nice to meet you. I think almost kind of, they almost kind of shout it from their perches. As we're going. In the central room. (laughs) What are your guys' names again? Lisa! Lisa! Push push it forward. And with the rumble, the the portcullis creaks really loudly. Then, slowly, the gate rises. And that is where our story ends tonight. I know, I know, I'm sorry, but all good stories must come to an end. And unfortunately, this is where it ends tonight. But don't fret. Seriously, Gora Findusbender, enough with the questions. I've no more answers. And I'm out of veil and coin as well. But if you come back and bring your friend, and throw some copper my way, I'll tell you more of these cursed demon days.